All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of How Sidescope Works or something. Yeah, let's call it that. How Sidescope Works or something. So today we're going to uh, do some uh, Microsoft MSSQL monitoring using some WinRM monitoring. So that's going to be fun. So uh, there is a thing that you need to do for WinRM, and you're more than welcome to open your Google search and type WinRM service validation or something, and it will give you a full uh, blown explanation about what I'm doing here right now. But basically, there is a lot of things that you can do with WinRM. In terms of configuration, you can put it to be HTTPS or something, secured with certificates or anything. So that's like super cool way of communicating with your Windows host through a better channel than it used to be, like a WMI or something, or instead of installing SSH uh, server as a gateway to your Windows server, right? That, that wasn't convenient. So WinRM is something that came out, I think, by default in uh, 2012. It became a default thing that's turned on your servers unless your local admin tinkers with it. So when you run this thing, WinRM E, and then just configure listener, you get a port that it listens to and the protocol that it can use. So that's very, really important because, you know, if you try to deploy a WinRM-based monitor from Sidescope and it doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean that Sidescope is at fault. So definitely check this out. Now, uh, when, when we'll go to Sidescope and we'll try to add this server, so, that's the DB for APM in my case. So it's the MSSQL 2017 dev version, right? So I'm going to say DB oh, uh, DB for APM 2017, something like that. And I'm going to say APM, basically give its name, APM DB item.com. And we are going to just type in the normal password not going to use uh, the um, profile credentials or something like that because why why should we administrator yeah that looks pretty much so we're going to do you win wmi but win rem with http port and this is the default port so everything is good right so now we click on save and test and it will fail why we'll find out in a second so first of all we'll let it fail so it tries its best to to get it and see uh, what's going on all right so while it fails it's still it's kind of safe so we can press this button later but apparently by even when your WinRM is enabled by default you need to tell it that uh, it's okay to accept communication from unencrypted sources and again, uh, if you type WinRM um, communication setup or something in Google, you'll get a list of all of those comments and practically the first result. So I'm not going to post it here because what's the point? Right. So when we run this thing, it gets this uh, output for you, basically meaning that now it accepts unencrypted communication. So we're going to do just that. Just give it a sec, give it a sec. And then it will connect. So the, the first thing that you might notice is that it's actually harder for it to do so. Oh, username. Yeah. APMDBitem.com administrator. I hope I used everything the right way. Yeah. Maybe it's just too many characters. What happened to the server? apmdb.item.com, right? So yeah, something happened to uh, to the address, but believe me, it wouldn't work even on the first attempt. I know it because I tested before I actually recorded. So <laughs> definitely a thing. So uh, the whole address was kind of messed up, but we are on the right track. So let's give it a let's give it a second. Yeah, WinRM communication is a little bit slower than WMI on its own. 
So there we have it, connection successful, and we're super happy. So that's step number one in order to connect to services and monitor them, or at least get some uh, machine statuses. So we're going to use the opportunity to also uh, perform some more configurations for WinRM. So WinRM as a service, it has its own limits about what it's going to do, and when you task it, Constantly, you need to make sure that it has enough memory to uh, to perform those tasks, and we're going to set it to four gigabytes. Oh, we're going to set it to four gigabytes when the copy paste will work. So this is something that you can get in the uh, site scope help actually for WinRM monitors. It's very really, really helpful. But what what it wants? What it wants? Okay. So that's number one. We set it to four gigabytes, which is pretty funny because my database here takes it has like six gigabytes in general for its for itself. But yeah, WinRM maybe not the most effective thing in the world. But uh, we're not sure. We don't know if it's actually going to use this. But in case it does, at least the limit is kind of somewhere up there. All right, idle timeout in milliseconds. That's what three minutes. Okay, so in case it's tasked with something really difficult and you see how long it takes for it to connect, at least it wouldn't, at least it wouldn't time out that fast. Okay, and uh, now uh, just the uh, timeout in general, right? So that's for idle and that's for the tasks that it needs to perform. So basically, if there is a task, it would expire in three minutes. If there is no task, but it kind of idle, sits over there, not doing nothing, it will time out in three minutes anyways. All right, so we, we're good, we're good. So now it's time to monitor our DB. And actually, SiteScope has a um, DB monitor that's based on that uh, out of the box and it works. So we're gonna say, you know, DB monitor or something, we'll create a group. And in this group, we will deploy a um, monitor. And it's going to be MSSQL, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe just SQL. Where is it? Microsoft SQL Server, that's right. That's the one. So we just click it. And then we wait. OK, so DB, oh, come on, mon. On 8 p.m. DB. And I'm going to mention the version of it. Okay, the server will select the server. And now it will get the SQL server instance name. So, with this type of monitors, you need to click this get counters button. And then you wait. Okay, so this is the waiting part that I was talking about. This is why we set the expiration to three minutes. WinRM is not that fast. I don't know if we can blame WinRM for it, or we can blame uh, the fact that there is like Java-based publication, automation, build, whatever, uh, that runs it. Maybe it introduces some slowness. Uh, but yeah, the, the, it is what it is. And maybe in other environments, I might see that it works faster. I'm not sure. But yeah, definitely, I'm not just talking to stall the time until it <laughs> pops out. No, no. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a good idea to just skip ahead to the part where it starts working. So there we have it. Lots and lots and lots of counters. So I guess it tries to get all of the available counters from the server and they just present it to you in some kind of a uh, fashion that allows you to select it. Maybe that's uh, the, the, term, the fact that determines the slowness. I guess it is. So we got lots of things over here. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I have no idea which one are needed to uh, to monitor your database uh, effectively. I heard about the locks being important, but there's like a lot of locks, and uh, maybe maybe um, we'll do you know database locks, and then we'll go with um, SQL errors, maybe kill connection errors, maybe maybe we'll take those. So just to know, this is just the best practices, right? So if you're a DB guy, 
and you work with the monitoring guide, please tell them what you find to be unstable or, uh, you know, worthwhile in monitoring because there's a lot of settings over here, right? So, for example, I can do the default workload, okay? Default. Okay, let's, let's do it. Internal, I don't know what internal means. Basically the same thing. So, I'm going to be... So I'll use the default ones for workload groups. So it looks like server statistics to me. Then I'll do locks and uh, that's about it. Uh, probably there's a lot, a lot of other things that you might find useful, but we're talking about the how to get there, not to how to monitor your database effectively. So monitor run settings, we'll set it to what? 10 minutes, that's okay. Yeah, in terms of integration with OpsBridge and so, where is it? Right. There's none. Okay. Fantastic. So verify and save. I think this uh, site scope is not integrated with, yeah, it's not integrated with OpsBridge right now, with OBM. So we're going to leave it at that. All right. Fantastic. So um, let's see. Monitoring going. Yeah, I just pressed the button too many times. Okay, so it's running, and soon we will be able to refresh and see what's going on. So here we have it, and actually lots of things that I probed it for show zero. It's like CPU violated, so nothing is violated. What we see, max request CPU time, as request. So, so yeah, basically I chose wrongly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think there are more useful things in the database, but we need to understand the database. I'm not, I'm not a DB guy. I'm the Sitescope guy, partially, right? So there we have it, and I hope you like it. And if you want more content, you know what to do. I mean, you, you, this is not your first YouTube video. You know what I want. <laughs> I'll see you around.